walked in this evening, I sat next to Donna, um, and I asked her, she was getting ready for her talk, butterflies? And she looked at me and said, I feel sick to my stomach. And looked at me as if it were my idea to have teacher do the, oh wait, it was my idea. <laughs> but uh, for those of you that came and showed up and did one, uh, thank you for taking a risk. For those of you that considered it, even during the consideration process, did it feel like something was in your stomach? And what is that? And I think that um, as I tell the story of how we created a district-wide TEDx club and TEDx event, we'll get why it's important. And what I contend is that if every child in Cajon Valley learned to create a TED-like talk and deliver it on the stage, it would have an impact on their personal economy and also an impact on the local economy. Don't you see the skills that your children are learning through this process, how it will, will relate to any field, any career that they might pursue? This is our story. So here we are. A year ago today, Greenfield, not today, about a year ago, um, summertime. And how many were here at this event? Okay. So we're going through this process. What I want to share is that the opportunities that we have here are brought to you by the TED Ed team. And this is Laura, Logan, Annie, Ashley, Stephanie, Stephanie, and Tristine, who's no longer with the team but was part of this process. And because they gave us the creativity and flexibility to use their curriculum, um, to access their tools, we have this opportunity that nobody else has. And what they charge us with is to create a system that others can replicate. So as we tell this story today, I hope that other districts will see this, be inspired, and give their students the same opportunity because it's not just a local problem. Our national economy is dependent upon kids who can create, who can think of new solutions and new ideas, and then communicate those ideas in a very intentional way. And so, about a year and a half ago, I went with Justin Slagle, our board president, to the TED conference to activate our license so that we can actually have the event. And at that event, uh, one of the TED Ed people came up to me and said, I know Jennifer Traglia. And I looked at her, and I was thinking, did you go to college together? Because I love working with her and what she's doing with her kids with the TED Ed curriculum. I said, TED Ed curriculum, what's that? And then found Jen, and she showed what she was using. I thought, there's a curriculum for this? How do we get into that? And then so I logged into the TED, um, TED Ed website, created an account, and then through some happen chance, got invited to participate with this initial cohort of global TED Ed educators. So for the last year and a half, I've been going through this process of learning the curriculum and tools that TED Ed has created. And these six people that you saw, they're champions for education, champions for teachers, and champions for students. Let's give the TED Ed team a, a big round of applause. And so that sound, when I hear that sound, I get excited. It means something cool is going to happen. Somebody's idea or story is going to reach me. So I listen to this on my hour-long drive um, into El Cajon, and in my hour and a half long drive back um, to North County. And I, at night when my family goes to sleep, I put in the earbuds and watch more TED Talks. And just, I think the idea of listening to others, hearing what others are thinking about, really helps me in my creative mode. And so at the TED um, workshop a few weeks ago, they asked me to share a little bit about my TED story. And that's where it started. Um, quickly, you can get a TED ache after watching too many TED Talks. I think after about three or four, you should stop. It's equivalent of a break for you. But the TED lights turned on for me um, when I first saw a talk by Ken Robinson. How many have seen Ken Robinson's talk? And that's where my TED story began. I was a principal in 2007 um, during the No Child Left Behind race trying to improve test scores, looking for a motiv motivational video for my staff. And found him and watched this talk. I laughed, I cried, and I thought, could I possibly show an 18 minute video in a staff meeting and get away with it? But it was so good, um, I brought it on my computer and at the end of the staff meeting I told my staff, hang in there, this is 20 minutes, but please listen um, to what Ken has to say and let's have a conversation about what we're trying to do with our kids. And I, I don't know if I'm the only one that does this, but I watched the other people as they watched Ken. I wanted to see how they would react to his talk. And the teachers laughed, they laughed out loud and they cried. And I could see some think, and I could see some angry, angry at our system angry at what we're doing to kids in the testing regime. And then we had the most amazing conversation about the future of our school 
And this talk changed the trajectory of my professional career. And stop worrying about just test scores. And yes, Janet, they are important, but they're not the only thing that's important. And really looked at the world that the kids lived in and what we needed to do to prepare them for that. So that was my story. And I thought about all the different TED Talks that I've seen, and quite frankly, I'm predicted. <laughs> and then the next experience I had was um, a friend referred a TEDx organizer from TEDx America's Finest City to see if I want to give a talk. And I watched TED Talks forever, but had really no idea what a TEDx event was. So I said, sure, great, you could advance the district story. And I was nervous. And then the person said to me, if you're nervous, then you're not the right person for this job. Because if you're nervous, you're worried about you. And it's not about you, it's about the idea. And when I thought about that, do I have an idea where it's spreading that if somebody else hears it, it might positively impact their world? It really took the nervousness away and the creative, critical thinking process and how I might communicate that um, in play. And that's what I think is important for our kids. If they can all go through this process and de develop the confidence to express ideas in a unique, novel way, they're going to be successful in any field they enter. And so very humbled, I signed up and then was enrolled in a speaking school, uh, like a coaching club for future TEDx talkers. And I was thinking, I do this for a living. I, I speak in front of people all day long. But at this uh, workshop, I was so humbled by how poorly I communicate and how much I had to work on. And I think that lesson also, that you're teaching your kids through the curriculum that the TED Ed Club made, is showing kids what specifically they can work on and how they can be a better communicator. And if we can continue this cycle through kindergarten, first grade, second grade, by the time they leave us in eighth grade, the Gross Point Union High School District won't know what kid them. And so I delivered this talk. It was marginal at best. And so hopefully I'm getting better. I've learned some, some things through the TED Ed curriculum. And so this might look familiar. The TED Ed Club gave us this curriculum. And Liz and I have been working with it to try to develop um, explorations. This exploration was actually for me. I learned about this platform as a student. So I watched the video, engaged in online discussions with other TED Ed leaders around the world. And over a year and a half, we got to know each other. And just a couple weeks ago, we got to meet at TED Youth in New York and are now trying to spread these ideas. This is our TEDx project. Our TED Ed project is to create a TED Ed exploration for every school in our district to participate and learn about and create this experience and walk in the shoes of students before they walk on stage at TEDx Kids at El Cajon. And so going back to why I think it's important, a friend of mine, Steve Rieger, said, if you want to change learning, change the audience. And here's what he means by that. Most of the time when kids do work, who is, who is it for? Who's the audience? It's the teacher. If you change the audience, say, next week we're going to have um, your class watch your presentation. It kind of ups the level, changes the learning. They're going to have to present in front of their peers. What if we invite the fourth graders into the auditorium? You're going to give your talk to the entire fourth grade. That ups the learning. And what TEDx does, it allows the audience to be the world. Every person on the planet will have access to the TEDx YouTube channel, and every kid who gives a TEDx talk, and actually all of you who gave one today, are going to be on the TEDx platform, and I, I don't think, I know for sure, that somebody will see your talk and be inspired and moved by it. And I think that opportunity for our kids, when they graduate from high school and apply for college, and put check, yes, I've given a TEDx talk on stage, here's the link. I think that will help their college application. I think we're doing such amazing work, and thank you so much for being part of the process. Thank you very much.